Hey guys, it's Ray at OurVoiceOverGuy.com and wanted to throw together a quick tutorial. Um, my friend Dan in Arizona, uh, talked with him and kind of set up his Adobe Audition today. And one of the things that I realized that maybe uh, some of those who are putting up tutorials don't understand is usually we have a track armed, it's ready to go. We're talking about a finished piece, a uh, finished waveform, what have you. And then we're putting effects on it, we're exporting it. We don't show some of the simple things like, uh, you know, arming a track or exporting to a sort, certain file and things like that. So basically, I'm going to go from the beginning um, just to have this piece on here. And it, it was helpful for Dan earlier today. So uh, hopefully it may be helpful to uh, some other folks out there that are just getting familiar with Adobe Audition 3.0. Um, what you'll want to do is, you, you see the screen here. This is how I have it set up. As soon as I turn on Adobe Audition, it goes right into here with some presets already for me. So um, what you'll end up doing is if you click on uh, file, if you're in this stage already, just go to new session and it'll kind of bring it up like what you'd see in the beginning had you not uh, set up anything. And you'll see this here. It says new session. It's going to ask for your sample rate. Um, uh, 44.1 is what we want. We click OK. That's going to set it up. Uh, current session not saved. Uh, no, we don't need to save that. Um, and then from here, um, right below main and mixer, uh, you have your input track here, your out here, and then this right here um, is to change for uh, your track automation mode uh, for read and write. Uh, but we, we'll worry about that on another tutorial. This is just kind of the basic setup. Uh, what you want to do is uh, click this tab right here, and it'll open it up, and go to click on audio hardware setup. All right, from there, you get this audio hardware setup box that it will pop open. And then what you're going to do here is select your audio driver, whatever it is that you're using by chance. Um, so if you have maybe just the microphone on your computer, um, you'll be going with Audition 3.0 Windows Sound. Uh, and if you're trying to get any kind of clarity, any good vocals whatsoever, you want a different sound card. Um, you don't want this at all. Uh, you'll see I have a few different ones in here for my Multimix, um, Elise's Firewire that I have. Uh, my ASIO DigiDesign driver, and that's for my MBOX. Um, and then I have uh, the Sentrance, which we're going to use today um, because I am using um, a microphone and I have it plugged into actually a MicPort Pro, uh, which gives me phantom powder, power on that without having to run it through my mixer uh, or the MBOX. So for quick tutorials, it's real easy for me to set this up. Um, from there, uh, you'll see here it sets up the 44.1, buffer size 243. You'll have your outputs here, stereo, Sentrance, my port, port pro, uh, out one. And that goes into my headphones um, from this output here on this screen. Now, when we go over to edit view, I actually have it coming out of my monitor speakers. And we can, I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Um, here in mono, you have ports one and two for microphone. You'll see here default import, um, micro, mic port pro one. And the default output is Mic Port Pro Out 1. And that's my headphones that's connected to the Mic Port Pro uh, on the bottom. And then I can monitor that. And I have a little dial uh, to uh, give me more volume or less volume. So once you have that set, uh, you can do the same thing by going to Edit View and changing those as well. All right. Next thing is to arm your track. Click on Track 1 real quick. Hit the red for arm. That's going to bring up another dialog box. It's going to ask you to save the session in a file. There we go. So we'll call this one real quick. Test toot for tutorial. Uh, say, it's saving as a .ses or session file for Adobe. Click save. Let's right click here. And I'm going to go to monitor input level, um, external monitoring. Once you click on that, you can obviously see your levels going up and down. There we go. Um, loop, play, rewind, fast forward, uh, record and stop. So we're going to go ahead and hit record and get out a couple bars here real quick. Hey guys, it's Ray at ourvoiceoverguide.com doing a quick tutorial for my friend Dan in Arizona. We see bars going up, so we know we're recording. We got sound, so we're going to go ahead and stop it there. All right, you'll notice once you're done recording, uh, it goes to a green screen. 
here so you can see and you know that you're you're done recording so we've recorded the spot now so we're good there so i can just go ahead and turn this uh, box off here uh, to make sure i don't accidentally hit record and re-record over what i've already laid down so a couple things we're going to do now is just kind of optimize these uh, for delivery and then we'll export this out and that'll be the end of the tutorial so one of the things i want to do here is take this double click it and here you see it's opened up that file in the edit view the first one we were on was the multi-track view this is the edit view and so one of the things that i did here on uh, that i talked about with my friend today is when you do this um, be aware of the noise around you always record a few seconds of silence so you can pick up whatever room noise you have and then we're going to go ahead and clean this up so many people that do this have different ways of um, kind of adding eq and kind of uh, sweetening up their mix if you will um, i do mine a certain way and you know the right way the wrong way it's just my way so um, if this helps you at all um, you know please feel free to kind of use this and uh, we'll go from there one of the things we want to do here First is I always double click, which selects the entire file. You'll see it there in white. And then what I do is I go all the way up to the top of my effects panel right here. You have your files, the effects, and your favorites tab. Uh, once you're up in the effects area, um, I go to dynamics processing. You double click that and the dynamics processing opens up. Now, mind you, I have this set up already, um, but if you haven't used this before, one of the things you'll see is if you go down to the drop down menu or the effects preset uh, menu area, uh, you're going to look for Compander. And click on that, and you'll end up with this screen here. What I, what I want you to do, or what I'd suggest, is go to your graphic, because it's a lot easier looking at a graphic than it is a bunch of numbers, especially if you don't know what those numbers mean. You click on that and you'll automatically see once you do that, this turns into a really nice S curve here. And then what you can do is you can kind of go up and down here to kind of modulate your voice a little higher, a little lower. And I'll let you hear what that sounds like real quick by doing a preview right here. So you see the difference of that up and down. Uh, just play around with this until hey you guys, find kind of, Ray, there we go again. Our voice over there we go. So once you found your sweet spot, go ahead and click OK. And then you're going to get a box that shows the estimated time uh, while it processes this piece here. And it only takes a couple seconds. Uh, if you're doing a long file, obviously take a little bit longer. And what you'll see here is it just kind of evens out. Um, parametric equalizer to it or any other kind of EQ or compression. Uh, if you want to add a vocal track or I mean a music bed on line two, uh, it, it is limitless uh, from this point on. So when you're done, uh, what you'll do is you'll go up to the file. You will go to export audio mix down and this is where you'll choose uh, you can rename it if you'd like uh, we'll just keep it test toot mix down and this is where you'll save it at, at any type that you like so when you open this up here you can save it in a, a whole slew of different formats um, if you're doing um, phone messages a vox file a wave format mp3 uh, wma um, and there's even a few in here that I've never used before. So uh, a lot of possibilities here. Uh, for me, it's always uh, the MP3 Pro um, that works out nice for me and everything that I send off. Over here, you really don't have to test, uh, touch anything because it's, it, it's set up. It's on master. It's 32-bit. It's in mono because it's just a voiceover that we're doing real quick. And we go ahead and hit save. And as promised, there it is. Uh, in all its glory, and you can take a quick listen to what the finished piece sounds like. Hey guys, it's Ray at our voiceover guide. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. If it was helpful, please subscribe. If you have other helpful hints for those who are leaving messages, please follow up with those and, and help uh, create a, a better listening and audio future for those folks on YouTube who get involved with any kind of uh, digital audio workstation. This is Ray at our voiceoverguide.com. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time.